Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is Bob Ward, pollster and partner at Fabrizio Ward. Bob, thanks so much for joining me once again. Thank you, Brittany. It's good to be back. You have a poll hot off the press in Maryland. A new AARP poll shows that Vice President Kamala Harris has a really comfortable lead against former President Donald Trump in Maryland. Tell us some of your takeaways. Yes, um, the race is not close on the presidential side, um, and that's to be expected. I mean, Joe Biden won Maryland in 2020 by 33 points. And we're seeing Harris uh, ahead of Trump in Maryland by currently 32 points. Um, so not a big surprise. What is the surprise in Maryland, however, is the closeness of the Senate contest. So um, open seat, um, Democratic Senator Ben Cardin is not running again. You've got a former two-term Republican Governor Larry Hogan uh, as the Republican candidate going up against Prince George's County Executive Angela Alsobrooks. We have that race dead tied at 46%, um, which is a really interesting feat. Um, Hogan has won statewide in Maryland and he does it by appealing to um, Democratic constituencies. Um, you know, he is uh, winning 26% of the Democratic vote right now. He's winning 31% uh, of the African-American vote. Uh, and so these are numbers that you just don't, um, you know, aren't used to seeing from a Republican candidate, but that's Larry Hogan's formula and how he became a, a two-term governor. And it seems to be paying off now in, uh, in this Senate race. I think the other thing I would add to that, though, we are a couple months, you know, out from uh, a little bit more than a couple months out from the election. Angela also Brooks just really is not known to much of the state. And so as you look at, you know, her name ID and the number of people who just don't know who she is or don't have an opinion of her, she really has the ups upside here. Um, you know, given the strength at the top of the ticket that Harris brings, um, as Angela also Brooks gets introduced to voters in Maryland, you might expect to see this race, um, widen from a, from a dead heat. But, you know, that's depending on what kind of campaign she can run to introduce herself. And, um, you know, Larry Hogan is not running as a traditional Republican. Um, we see lots of his ads here on TV. And, um, you know, he, he doesn't mention Republican and he mentions that he's independent all the time. And frankly, it seems to be working right now. So we have in Maryland, Vice President Kamala Harris beating Trump more than double digits. And you have uh, Larry Hogan, who's a Republican, in a tie with his Democratic challenger. Is this because of his popularity as governor in the state? Absolutely. Um, Larry Hogan is well known to the voters of Maryland. Uh, there are a few people who don't have an opinion of him. Um, and not only is he well known, but he's well liked. Uh, and so if we look at you know his favorable, unfavorable numbers in Maryland, um, he has a net positive image uh, among Republicans, independents, and Democrats. Democrats have a 57% favorable, 29% unfavorable view of Hogan. Um, on the other side, you know, he has been attacked by Trump. He's not been a Trump supporter. And there are 26% of Republicans who have an unfavorable view of Larry Hogan, too. Um, most of them are still voting for him. Uh, but it's um, he appeals to a broad you know, cross section of the American uh, of the Maryland electorate. And it, you know, he his his uh, performance as governor, um, you know, uh, is, is showing here as he uh, tries to become a U.S. Senator. Maryland has seen a mix of Republican and Democratic governors. So is this dramatic of ticket splitting normal for the state? Or is this something you haven't seen in re recent election history? We haven't seen it. Uh, and, and so that's why I think people look at this race and I think it would be hard to imagine the Democrat in the Senate race here running so far behind the top of the ticket. Uh, like we said, Kamala Harris is going to win Maryland by, you know, 30 plus points. Um, and so, you know, Larry Hogan is different. Look, there are 17 percent of Maryland voters who are voting Harris Hogan. Uh, will, Har will Hogan be able to keep that number of ticket splitters up by the time Election Day comes around is a question mark. 
Um, I think much of that has to do with what kind of campaign uh, Angela also Brooks is going to be running. I want to read some numbers from your poll. Hogan has a 23 point lead with independent voters and Harris has a 14 point lead among the independents. So how important are independent voters in Maryland right now and how should candidates act accordingly? It's huge. I mean, that swing you just said um, uh, uh, across independent voters is just uh, mind boggling. Um, but independent voters are fickle. Um, they can change their mind through the course of the campaign. They're not adhered to one uh, party or another. Uh, and so that can change. So, but the fact that there is such a spread here just sort of testifies to the fact that, you know, Larry Hogan casts his appeal beyond his Republican base. Um, and they are, they are going to be crucial, as are older voters. Um, as we know, older voters make up, the, they're going to make up the majority of the electorate in Maryland this year. I think 53% we're estimating um, will be fit, age 50 plus. Um, and they are more motivated to vote than younger voters. Um, and so we ask people, you know, on a 10 point scale, uh, how motivated they are to vote. And there's a 17 point gap in people saying 10 out of 10 between those voters over 50 and under 50. So independent voters, older voters are going to be kind of the deciders here. Hogan has a two point lead among older voters. So there is a bit of an advantage, minor advantage there for him. Um, but there's a lot of campaign left to, to run. And 87% of older voters, 50 and above, are extremely motivated to vote, according to the poll. So what issues have you found matter most to them? Well, in Maryland, the economy really looms large. Um, unlike a lot of the battleground states that we've spoken about, where we see immigration being sort of a, a big issue, um, you know, with 55% of the electorate in Maryland being Democrat, um, uh, that issue is uh, is much lower, although still important among you know the Republicans that are in Maryland. But the economy is really the number one issue. Um, when we look at inflation, uh, the economy and jobs, uh, Social Security uh, among older voters, those three issues comprise fifty seven percent of the top issue um, that older voters uh, say are important to them. And that's, that's big among Republicans, it's big among independents, it's big among Democrats. And so when you think about older voters, you think about sort of tough economic times, one issue that really comes to mind is Social Security. And Social Security is a big deal in Maryland, as it is in many states. We've got 52% saying that Social Security is a major source of their income among older voters, or, or will be among those who are 65 plus who are presumably collecting Social Security, 61% say it's a major uh, deal. And so voters who can talk about Social Security, I mean, excuse me, campaigns that can talk about Social Security are going to connect with these older voters and, and hopefully win them to their, their side. We know that it doesn't matter if you're a Republican, Democrat or independent in Maryland, that Social Security is a salient issue and voters are going to be much more likely to support the candidate who can voice that support for Social Security. Do you think then it's safe to say or fair to say rather that if Hogan or also Brooks leans into these issues that matter most to voters, I mean, they could pull ahead come November? Absolutely. Um, and to focus on those issues for the section of the electorate who you know are going to show up. Um, and, and talking about the issues that are important to them. And another one that we've talked about uh, on, on previous polls is this issue of uh, family caregiving. That is a huge issue in Maryland. 31% um, of older voters in Maryland are family caregivers. And you know we know that there are more people who have been or expect to be family caregivers. Among black voters 50 plus, 40% are currently uh, caring for a loved one. Uh, and so this is an issue that is going to get hopefully more attention by the campaigns. And if I were the Hogan campaign, I would be talking about this a lot over the next two months. I do want to zoom out from Maryland for a second before I let you go. There was big news in the presidential election last week. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., the independent candidate, dropped out and endorsed Trump. So as a pollster, do you see this really making 
major waves come November and could be a deciding factor in the election? Uh, I don't think it would be um, a major um, issue. Uh, it could on the margins and in close states, anything on the margins could affect a race. Um, but what we've seen um, over the last month uh, as Harris has become the Democratic nominee and established herself, we've seen Kennedy's support drop um, across the battleground states. Um, and so he was, you know, high single digits, sometimes over 10 percent in some polls, uh, you, know, you know, end of June, beginning of July. Now, you know, most polls would show him around five, four percent. And so his support has, you know, um, sort of er eroded. Um, the folks who are left voting for uh, Robert Kennedy have decided previously not to vote for Trump. And so it's, it's going to be interesting to see whether this endorsement gets them over that hump. Um, but what we do know about those voters is that they are unreliable. Uh, they are less motivated. And so will they actually show up is a huge question mark. The last two uh, battleground polls that we've done uh, in Georgia, um, the multi-candidate ballot was hurting Harris by two points in Georgia and hurting Harris by two points in Michigan. And so the absence of uh, RFK Jr in both of those states actually could help Harris in those equations because she was tied with Trump in Georgia and in Michigan on the head to head. So it may have some difference on the margins, but which way is going to depend state by state. I don't think this is a big um, advantage Trump, um, you know, given, you know, uh, where the where the polls are at. Well, per usual, a lot remains to be seen. And as new polls come in, Bob, I hope you share what you're seeing in the field across the 50 states. Bob Ward, thank you again for the conversation. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.